Hey there and welcome to day number eight. This one is the follow-up video to day number seven. It's again all about bodies, components and assemblies. So in case you haven't seen part one yet, I'm gonna link it uh, for you in the right hand upper corner. If you have any questions so far, leave a comment in the comment section below. And now let's do not waste any more of your precious time and continue with part number two right away. I have prepared this simple design for you guys, so let's take a look at what we have here. We start with an assembly at the very top, and this one is an assembly because it contains three different components. I have a box here, a cylinder, and a sphere. And when I open up these components, you can see that they all contain several different folders, a bodies folder and a sketches folder, except the sphere. This one only contains a bodies folder because I was starting with a sphere primitive instead of a sketch, but for the other uh, components here, I was starting with a sketch and made some extrusions. Besides this, I have another body and another sketch directly in the assembly component here. And this one is the torus in the lower right corner. So it's this one here. And I've used the sketch to cut off the top of this donut. I have also saved the entire design as a regular or standard Fusion 360 file. And this is because there are no difference between assemblies and parts. So it's unlike in other CAD applications like SOLIDWORKS, for instance, because there you have to decide what are you going to create right at the beginning. So you can start with a part or with an assembly. And uh, let's say you are building something that consists of several different parts. Then you create all of the parts first create a new assembly file at the end and bring in all of these parts into this special assembly file. So this is not the case in Fusion 360 because it handles assemblies and parts or assemblies and components the exact same way. The method where you create the parts first and then bring everything together in a separate assembly file is also called the bottom up method. Whereas in Fusion 360, we have the top-down method where you create, let's say, an assembly file first with different components in it that serve as a container for our parts. So you start with the assembly first and then you populate it with parts along the way. In Fusion, there exists a way to distinguish between the single components and assemblies a little bit easier. At the moment, all of my bodies have the same gray material applied to them. But when I hit Shift N on the keyboard, I enable the component color cycling toggle, which is also available in the inspect dropdown menu. And this one does not only assign different colors to the components, it's also assigning different colors to the corresponding features in the timeline. Speaking of the timeline, let's take a look at the timeline below. And this one contains all of the features that I have used to build these parts because the uh, top level assembly or top level component is currently active. As you know from part one, each of my components has uh, its own timeline. So when I activate the box component, you can see that I have my um, features here that I've used to build the box. I've started with a primitive. Then I have drawn a sketch on the front plane, made an extrusion to cut away this edge, and then I have chamfered these three edges. And this of course goes for all of the components that I have created in this design. I can also simply replay the entire timeline by clicking on the play button here. And this is possible because all of the features were stored in the top level assembly. And when we reach the end of the timeline, then the current scene or the current design is fully built. I want to show you something interesting here. And this is probably something that you are not aware of if you are a beginner in Fusion 360. And this is that you can move features around or reposition features in the timeline. And this is always possible as long as a feature does not rely on an operation that happened in the past and that made the existence of this feature possible in the first place. Now, this sounds very complicated, but it's actually not. Let me show you what I mean by this. When I grab the history marker and move it back in time to a position where I only had the three components in the scene, then I can hover over the last one, 
which is called the sphere component and I can click and drag and drop this one to the first position and when you take a look at the browser here you can see that also the sequence changes when I do so. So the sphere container or the sphere component is now the first one in the list. When I now move the history marker to the right the box appears and also the operations that I've applied to this box. Then I was building the cylinder like so and after this I've decided to chamfer the three edges of the box. And because this feature does not rely on anything else that I was uh, doing on the cylinder, I can simply grab it and drag and drop it back in time and place it after the operations that I have performed on the box. Now, I cannot move this chamfer any further in the timeline to the left because this one relies on the extrude cut that I have done before. And this means that before the extrude cut, the edges that I was chamfering weren't available in the first place. So only after the cut I was able to chamfer these edges and this means that the chamfer has to be on this position and cannot be before the extrude cut or the sketch. When I now move the history marker over to the right again, something else is important to note here and this is that the torus or the donut has the same colors uh, like my assembly here. And this is because it exists not in one of these three components here, but in the main component. And like we have discussed in part number one, this is totally fine, of course, but it breaks rule number one. And rule number one means that it's always a good idea to create a component first and then start designing inside this component whenever your design or your scene consists of multiple parts. Now the question is, is it possible to place a body in a component even if you create the component after you are done designing the body? And the answer to this question is yes and no. Unfortunately, it's not always that easy to drag and drop or to copy an already existing body into a newly created component. Let's see what happens when I try this with our torus or the donut here. So I go to assembly, click on new component and I'm going to name this torus and it gets appended at the bottom of the list because the top level assembly was selected. So let's say I have the cylinder component selected when I create a new component, then this new component gets nested inside the cylinder component. Now, let me try to drag and drop the body of our torus inside the torus component and voila, this works. I now have a body folder with the donut or the torus in it. Now let's try the same with the sketch that I was using to cut off the top of the torus. And again, I select it and then I try to drag and drop it into the torus component. And unfortunately, this does not work. So I have three arrows here that tell me that the split command, the remove body command and the chamfer command are not able to perform correctly if I do this. And the reason for this is pretty simple. When I switch back to the top level assembly again and take a look at the timeline, we have this cut and paste feature at the very end. And this one takes the torus in its current state, so the torus with a cut and copies this one down into the torus component. I cannot drag and drop the sketch into the new component simply because it was responsible or it was the starting point for this cut. Now you're probably asking why not moving the sketch first and let me quickly undo this a couple of times so that our torus body is back in the main assembly and when I activate the main assembly again and try to or select the sketch and try to move it down into the torus. It doesn't work either because um, the split, the remove body, the chamfer and the move command will fail. And this is simply because the sketch is still related to the current form or the current shape of the uh, torus. The only workaround here would be to move the um, history marker back to the sketch so let me quickly show the sketch like so. Then I'm gonna right click on the right side of the history marker and select delete all features after the history marker like so. And then I'm able to drag the sketch into the 
now missing component followed by the actual body. So let me create a new assembly again and name this Taurus like so. And then I pick the sketch, drag and drop it into the Taurus command. Now it works, of course, because it's not related to anything else. And I do the same with the Taurus body. And all we have to do now is to perform the cut again so that I end up with the same geometry that I had before. This is not what I'm gonna do now. I will delete the entire Taurus component by simply clicking on it and then hit the delete key on the keyboard. Then I get prompted with this deletion warning message. I simply hit delete. And what this does is it also deletes the cut and paste command that I previously had in the timeline. And this brings the Taurus body back into the main assembly. So I'm gonna select it here again and delete it too. Now only the box, the cylinder and the sphere remain. I know all of this can be quite confusing at first, but I promise if you apply these to your own projects, the logic behind it will start to shine through and it becomes second nature pretty fast. Let's see what happens if I try to place one component in another component. So for this reason, I simply select the box and drag and drop it down into the cylinder component. And this works even if the box was created before the cylinder component, right? So the timeline itself hasn't changed and now the cylinder component also contains the box component. And at the same time, the icon changes from the standard box icon to an assembly icon. This was possible because nothing in the box component was related to the cylinder component. And you call these structures sub assemblies or nested components. Let's undo this and let me show you how to copy a component next. This is really easy. Let's start with the box first. I'm going to select the box component here, right click, go down to copy. And then I right click on the top assembly and here I select paste. Then the move and copy window pops up and I simply move the box or the copy of the box over to the side. The thing is that this one is not just a simple copy, it is an instance. And this means that when I change one box, also the other box changes accordingly. And this is because both refer to the same source data. This means when I apply a chamfer to one component, like so, also the other component changes accordingly. And this is because this one here is a reference of our first component. And this also becomes obvious if you look at the number behind the name. So we have here box number one and the reference over here is box number two. And you cannot change this number. You can only change the name when you slow click on the title here and then Fusion adds the number automatically at the end. Now, let's say you would like to copy a component without having it as a reference in the scene. Of course, also this is possible. So let me quickly delete the box number two here by selecting the component and hitting the delete key. Then I select box number one again, select copy, go up to my top assembly. And instead of selecting paste, I select paste new. This brings up the move and copy command window again, and I move the uh, box over. And when I do this, you can immediately tell that it is a separate component because it has a different color and it is called box number one. And at the same time, it is the first instance of our new component. The last thing I'm going to show you in this video is how to create XREFs and XREF is short for external references. So the box that I was creating before was an internal reference and the difference between an internal and an external reference is that the external one is stored on a separate location. This sounds pretty complicated again, but I promise you that it's not. So let me quickly show you how to create an external reference. And basically you have two options here. You can start to create a new component and here simply select external instead of internal. And when you do so, you can choose a location in your project folders. I'm not going to do this uh, because I will turn this box here into an external reference. And for this reason, I right click on the component and select 
save as a copy, then I save it as my XREF box and I'm gonna save it in the assembly demo location. So click on save and it should appear here in a second. And then I simply delete the box from the scene like so. And I can now right click on the XREF document and select insert into current design. This takes a second because it loads it from the cloud and then the move and copy command appears again and let me move it to the side like so. And it gets appended to the browser list here as a new XREF box component. It is easy to tell that it refers to an external document because of this link icon. And let's open the XREF box in a new tab. So I simply double click on it and then I change, let's say, the radius of the fillet like so. Click on OK, save the document, switch back to the assembly. And here I get prompted with a few warning signs. I have a warning triangle here, one here and one down here. This simply tells me that the component is not up to date anymore. So when you click on this triangle, it gets updated. So usually it takes a second. And here we have the um, adjusted component in our assembly. Now you don't have to open the corresponding file every time you do some adjustments. So let me quickly close our XREF box over here. And then I hover over the components name and click on edit in place. And this opens up the component inside the current assembly and I can now make my adjustments. So for instance, I um, adjust the radius of this fillet one more time like so. And when I click on OK and exit the edit in place mode like so, and then save the assembly, the changes will be transferred into the XREF box file over here. So if I open this one by double clicking on it, it should have the same radius on the fillet like I was changing it in the main assembly. Now guys, that's it for this video, simply because this is all I know about bodies, components and assemblies at the moment. I will probably create one or two additional videos in the future when I have to deal with this concept uh, on some more practical examples. But for now, thank you very much for watching the whole thing. I hope it was helpful and see you in the next one.